Hey guys, welcome back to the Abindan Effect. So recently I've been getting to another game called Apex Legends. So basically what Apex Legends is, is a FPS battle royale where we have different characters with different unique abilities. Each of these characters can change the tides of the game drastically. Some have big radars, some can go really fast, and some can go grappling across the an area. What we do is we usually drop from a ship and we go all the way to the ground and we scavenge for all of our materials like guns, ammo, and armor. And so because this is an FPS game, it has to obey some kind of physics. And it's very evident in very far areas when you're trying to shoot out someone and try to snipe them, you notice that the bullet somehow curves downwards. In physics, we call this bullet drop. So bullet drop is a big part of a lot of FPS games, just like Battlefield. Why do we have bullet drop? Basically, the reason why we have bullet drop is because of two reasons. One, because of gravity and two, because of the air resistance, or the force that the air puts on the object. So how do we calculate for this? A lot of people have tried estimating how we get these, but what I want to show you is the mathematically correct way to calculate for your bullet drop. So let's break it down this way. I'll show you first how to calculate bullet drop, and then I'll show you how to calculate for the different types of bullets we have in Apex, and then I'll show you a more simplified version of what I calculated and experimented, and how we can apply these calculations in-game without having to do like these complicated calculations. All right, so let's get to it. So in Apex, we have different kinds of ammo and different kinds of guns for them to be used in. We have arrows, we have light ammo, heavy ammo, shotgun ammo, energy ammo, supply drop ammo, and sniper or marksman ammo. And each of these ammo types have different velocities or different ways they travel across the map. And we're gonna be seeing how we can take into account these different bullet types. So we need to assume a few more things in order to analyze and understand what we're gonna be doing. First, we need to understand that our change in Y or the change in the vertical is what we're gonna be seeing as our bullet drop. If it goes negative, then that's gonna be showing that it's going downwards. If it's going positive, it's gonna be going upwards. So this is gonna be depending on the angle, but most of the time, it's gonna be negative. Second, where our gun is on our body, relative to the character, is what we're gonna be seeing as zero, or our origin within a plane. And this will make our calculations easier to understand and looking at the angles much easier. So the first thing that we needed to do is find out the velocities of each of these bullet types. What I did was I went to the training ground and looked at the farthest target that wasn't too far for the bullet drop to come into play. What I wanted was to keep it as secluded as possible in order to get the real velocity of the bullet. So the one I settled with was the 130 meter target, which was just about near the mountain. I shot the gun, I timed it on how fast it would reach the target by looking at how fast the marker, or as we see here, the hit marker would flash. And I would time it each time, seeing how fast these bullets travel. And I took the average of each of these gun's velocities in order to create the ammo type velocity. And with the experiment, I concluded that the heavy and supply drop ammo have the slowest bullet velocity compared to every other bu bullet. Obviously, the energy does not have a bullet velocity because it's mostly lasers. And in Apex, these energy ammos or these laser guns have basically a hit scan kind of ammo or bullet. Meaning that when you click on your mouse, it's almost instantaneous that the bullet travels to the target. So it's almost impossible to get the exact velocity of these uh, bullets. So I assumed that they were basically zero. So we're going to be leaving all the energy ammo side and also the charge rifle and all other laser type of guns. But essentially, heavy and supply drop have the slowest bullet velocity. So let's get down to the equations. How do we know how a bullet travels without air resistance and with air resistance? Well, look at this. This is a very idealized version of how everything works. So when we look at this graph, we notice that the travel of the object is almost perfectly parabolic. And this is without air resistance because there's nothing stopping the object from moving and the only thing that's dragging it down is gravity. But with air resistance, we notice that the curve of this travel is much more steep. Once we reach a certain point, it starts to fall off very fast. And this is because there's something else pushing against the object. And this is what we call air resistance. With air resistance in the equation, we can now calculate how our bullets will drop. So, the physics equations, the best part of the video. So what I did was, is I took the regular mechanics equations that we have and slightly modified it. From our basic mechanics, we know that in order to calculate the change in the y direction, 
or the uh, displacement in the y, we take in the velocity in the y-axis times time plus one half of the acceleration in the y-axis times time squared. So how do we find, first off, the velocity in the y direction? When we did our experiment, we found the average velocity of each bullet. And this is a general direction. Our velocity can be subdivided into its x and y components. And in order to get the y component, we just times the, the general velocity by sine or cosine if you want to get the x our acceleration in the y-axis would probably be almost the same. So, in order to get our acceleration in the y-axis, we need to apply Newton's second law. And this is the famous F equals ma, force equals mass times acceleration. What we did was, is we took the summation of all the forces acting in the y direction. Big kind of word here. Basically, it's the collection of all the forces that were acting on the object from the y direction or the vertical direction. So, those are only two things the gravity and the air resistance. Both of these forces, the force of gravity and the force of the air resistance or drag, are both acting downwards or pull down on the object. So when we write them down, we represent them in a negative connotation. So when we find the summation of all the forces acting on the y direction would be equal to the negative force of gravity minus the force of drag or the force of air resistance, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y-axis. All right, in order to get the acceleration in the y-axis, we just divide both sides by the mass. And we know that Fg or the force of gravity is equal to mg because that is the mass times the acceleration. The acceleration here is the gravity constant, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now we move on to the drag. The force of drag is given by the equation C times rho times area times velocity squared over 2. A lot of weird variables here. So basically, CD or C sub D is the drag coefficient or how much the object takes in the air resistance. And rho here is the density of air. A here is the cross-sectional area of the bullet. V is the velocity. And we put that all over 2. So after all of that, we get this really big equation for the summation of all forces in the y direction, which will be equal to negative mg minus c rho a v over 2 times v sine theta is equal to m a y or m times acceleration in the y-axis. But wait, why is there a v sine theta? So basically, the v squared would be accounted for the general velocity or the general direction. So in order to account for the y direction of the air resistance, we need to times it. We need to take one of those v's and put it in the y direction. If you want to see more in-depth equations or proof of what I tried to do, I put a link in the bio for my PDF of all my solutions and different um, blueprints that I used in order to calculate for all of this. So with our general equation, we just divide everything by mass and we get negative g minus c rho a v over 2m times v sine theta is equal to the acceleration in the y-axis. There you have it. We have our acceleration in the y-axis. Now we can complete our placement y equation. We go back all the way back. We have y equal to the velocity in the y direction times time minus one half times gravity plus the drag force equation, v sine theta, and all of that times t squared. And with this equation, I was able to calculate the different bullet drops for each of these bullet types. And what we get are these numbers right here. As we can see, the heavier the ammo, the more it started to drop. And this is also coherent with what I said a while ago, that the supply drop and the heavy ammo have the slowest bullet velocity because the slower it is, the more likely it is to fall faster. But also, the faster it is, the more likely the force of drag will be stronger. So what this confirms is that bullet drop plays a big part in calculating or estimating how far our bullets can go. The big question now, how do we use all of these numbers in game? How do we estimate, how do we use these calculations and experiments to create a unifying way to mathematically calculate our bullet drops and use it to get some nasty headshots? Here's a way. One of the easier ways to account for all of this bullet drop is aim slightly above the head. Aim too high, it will go too far. Aim too low, you're gonna get a body shot. That's still okay, but we want that instantly. So, you wanna aim slightly above the head, most especially when your enemy is in a higher elevation. Usually, when they're in a higher elevation, your bullet tends to travel lower than your crosshair by a bit, slightly. When you're in 
higher elevation while they're in lower elevation, you can just aim on the head because gravity is working with the bullet here. If you are equal elevation, then we can aim also slightly above the head, depending on how far they are, of course. This is also plays a big part here. Make sure to use these tips according to how far you're on the side. If you're near, you don't really need to account for this bullet drop. If they're far, this is why our big brains are the head. Another way is to use the crosshair of our gun. Some guns, most especially the snipers, have different level lines on them. We can use these lines in order to calculate for how far our bullet will go. For me, the gun that feels like they have the most bullet drop is the longbow. Whenever I use the longbow, I tend to see it curve a lot more than the other snipers. So what I do is, I look at the scope, look at where the line is. There's like two lines below the middle part. What I do is, because they're kind of far, the farther they are, the higher I'll aim my crosshair to the point it will hit the second line. But if they're nearer, I will aim it towards the first line, closest to the middle of the crosshair. If of course they're near, I just aim directly on their head. Okay, with all of the math out of the way, let me show you how to really use it in game in Apex Legends. Here we go! It's a long drop! Fun! This is the domain, that's all like propane Build up with gold chains, hold up with new games I'm from the world wide web, how I'm catching all these Still I'm burning, why they're concerning over the pain I'm burning domain, gas up like propane Load up with gold chains, bolt up with new games I'm from the world wide web, how I'm catching all these Still I'm current, I'm just confirming all of the that I'm learning Yeah and I switch it up like I'm Shyamalan Splitting up how I'm making money And I stay the villain like a Shadow Khan Yeah, I had to switch it up another level With the transformation Megatron Hungry girl wanna come along Fast like Ramadan oh. Now I'm on my beast like power Fade all like I'm full now I'm killing it while the accountant is billing it Bringing in wishes to Dende I bled it like I'm Lorente My body looking excellent They don't wanna hear that True pain Bring in the juice Come with a smile, break through like Kool-Aid I made the news Cause I come with a fight All the fact that I'm too paid Too made I'm from that new age Alright Thank you guys so much for watching And if you love watching physics content about video games Leave a like down below And also subscribe Leave a comment down below what you want to see next And different video games that you want to see Broken down in a physics way With that Hope you enjoyed See you next time, Smart Particles. Gas up light, gas up light, your greatest enemy. Empathy, I'm feeling numb to it. Feeling better now, I cut it off. Visualizing all the fun.